that we are going. Okay, let me record it in case. Chuck W three O M operating as W three O C net control for the radio Two Rivers Amateur Radio Club net. This radio net meets every Monday here at eight PM on the one forty six point seven three megahertz WA three PBD repeat gate way of an association. Membership in the Two Rivers ARC is not required to check into this net as all radio amateurs are welcome. If you'd like information about the Tours Amateur Radio Club, you can write to us at P.O. Box 225, Greenock, PA, zip code 15047. That's P.O. Box 225, Greenock, PA, zip code 15047. We're also on the Internet's World Wide Web at www.trarc.net. www.trarc.net. Radio Club means are held on the third Tuesday of every month except August, December. Starting at 7 p.m. at the Blaine Hill Volunteer Fire Department, 409 Oxford Avenue, and Elizabeth, PA. We're open this net for check ins as emergency or priority traffic at this time. Okay. Does anyone have listening to Silent Key? Any radio amateurs have recently passed away? Heard. I don't know of any, at least not recently. Okay. Um, please, when you check into this net, I give your call sign slowly and phonetically. Please you spell out your call sign. Uh, and if they give me an ask your comments for this net. At this time, I'm looking for any officers of the tour of the amateur radio club wish to check into this net. Alright, if we have none, that's a first. W three O C. Oh, never mind. Huh. This is whiskey. Uniform three uniform. Code to Elizabeth. No traffic. Let me get this done. No. Okay, whiskey uniform three uniform. Code that Kurt. Any other members of the Two Rivers ARC board of directors wish to check it? W3OC. W3OC, please recognize Whiskey America 3, Alpha Hotel Charlie, Antonio Serra in Pittsburgh. Good evening to Choco Mills on the net, no traffic. Please call me Kilo 
Alpha 3, Fox Gun, Whiskey, Quebec, Jetson Greensburg. Good evening, everyone. <laughs> Kilo Alpha 3, Fox, Whiskey, Quebec, hello there. All right, now we'll open up for general check-ins. Everyone else has to check Mike to do so, call him up. Fox is BOC. This is the number C, Fox is C, uniform. Check and fix truck. I'm going to check in with an net.
to, to the EFS, it's, uh, it starts to fill up pretty, pretty quick. The person to contact, if you wish to be the exhibitor, you contact Bill Powers, the KB3WP, that's 412-260-5699. Uh, I'd have to leave a message, 412-260-5699, or you can try email to ATSFBill2 at gmail.com. ATSFBill2 at gmail.com. There's also an amateur radio exam session scheduled um, during the morning hours, I believe it's in the morning around 9 or so. Um, Walk-ins will, will be accepted. Uh, you, you can pre-register by uh, calling uh, this phone number or email 412-751-9657 for the phone. 412-751-9657 for the phone. Or you can do an email to vgteam at trarc.net. Email at So that's coming up this coming Sunday, uh, April the 3rd, at the Palisades, the Houston Palisades Event Center, 105th Avenue, Mickeysburg, Pennsylvania. So if you're not familiar with that area, it's right along, right off the uh, Yonk Virginia River near the point uh, where the, where the uh, Yonk Virginia and the uh, Monongahela uh, they kind of join. Okay, uh, there was some concern. I know I've heard a couple of people ask about the bridge that goes across the Okagini River, the Drum Street Bridge. That bridge is open in, in both directions now, so there shouldn't be any problem with that. There was last year, but it yeah, didn't do any reconstruction, but it's open now. So uh, that's coming up. Other things coming up, let's see. Uh, this is the month of April. April 9th is I am at the Cuyahoga, Ohio. April 24th, the Pittsburgh Antique Radio Society has their Tri State Radio event at the Center State Bank with all in the PA. More information is on their website, www.pittsburghantiqueradiosociety.org. Uh, if you're interested in vintage uh, electronics, that's a good place to go. Um, let's see, May, May 1st is the Pittsburgh Marathon. Uh, you can sign up for that. They're always looking for amateur radio operators for that. Their website is marathon.central.org. Marathon.central.org. The contact person is Jeff, November 3, November Hotel, Sugar for sign up. And of course, uh, way further in May 20 through the 22nd, the date now mentioned in the Casino, Ohio. A lot of folks go out here for that. Uh, in June, June 4th and 5th is Appreciators Ham Fest at Big Bunker Fair, Route 422 in Project PA. Uh, I think I'll stop at that point because some of the ones are in, in July and August. Okay, and one other item. Let's see what I can Okay, it's W three O C net control. Okay, of course, uh, the talk of the town is this recently issued public notice that the Federal Communications Commission released on March the twenty third gives the effective date of new application fee rates for the Wireless Technology Bureau Communication Bureau, which is what the amateur radio service operates operates under. Uh, it says on December 23rd, 2020, the Commission adopted a report and order implementing a new application fee schedule, which significantly updated the Commission's previous fee schedule. Okay, so uh, what it is, is on April 19th, uh, for, for, for applications with the FCC, the fee is going to, is going to go from uh, free to, uh, in most cases, free to $35. So, uh, um, that, that will become effective on April 19th. There's a, 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 a news story in the, in the uh, news line that uh, I have queued up on the computer to give us more information on that. So that's coming up on April the 19th. And of course, a lot of folks are, are, are interested in that. And, uh, well, we know it's been coming. They've been talking about it. Uh, the FCC has been talking about this for several years. And they have been implementing this across their the speed schedule things across all of their uh, their their technology bureaus for for at least a year or two. So 
uh, we're kind of the, 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 the amateur radio kind of stuff is kind of a little bit on the late side. But uh, okay, that starts on April the 19th. Okay, uh, let's see here. I think that's kind of a big story. We'll have to see, see what the newsline's got tonight. I'm sure they have a, a big story on that. Uh, anybody in your repeats or any name heard? It's W306. W306, Sam Hill, Sam Hill, Sam W3OC, this is Kilo Alpha 3, Echo Kilo Oscar, Lake Chicken, good evening to the net. Okay, I think Kilo Bravo 3, Delta Victor Delta, and Kilo Alpha 3, Echo Kilo Oscar. Anybody else? W3OC, this is N3, Juliet, Papa, Quebec, Kurt, and Harper Sales. Good evening to that. No comments. W3OC, W3OC, please recognize the US Selling Free, November, November, Papa, Mike, and Scott Thatcher. Good evening to Scott and everyone on the next dinner chapter. Okay, that N3 JQ, you know what? Julia Papa Quebec, Kilo Charlie 3, November, November 5th. Anybody else? Kilo Charlie 3, Papa and Jake Kilo, Sean Whitehall, wants to be in and out. K3OC, this is K3KSP with a quick comment. Okay, I have one second. Kilo Charlie 3, Papa and Jake Kilo, you had a question? I think uh, you might be referring to me. It was Papa India Kilo. Uh, I did not have a question. I was just checking in. I was saying I was going to be in and out. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. Uh, VSP, go ahead. Yes. Uh, yes. This is K3KSP. You mentioned the Kyle uh, Hoover Fall Panther. Uh, well, my brother, W03X, is a member of that Kyle Hoover Falls Club. We've gone to that Panther for many years. And it is a pretty nice Panther. About the size of the two rivers they have fed. And uh, we always should tour it there. We always have a good time. And uh, uh, like I said, it's a very nice hand test. Although it is um, it is probably 120 miles from, well, from my QTH here at Carnegie, it's about 120 miles. But, uh, uh, well, we, we grew up there because, of course, my, my brother and the sister in law live there. So, uh, back to you. Hey, Roger, thank you very much, okay? All right, uh, anybody else can inquire before I switch over to this one? Okay, all righty. Let me switch over to this one. It's going to be a three of us. Amateur Radio Newsline Report number 2317 with a release date of Friday, March 25th, 2022. Tomorrow in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. The following is a QST. China's space station makes room for amateur radio. Russia and Belarus are suspended from CEPT. And hands help other hams after Australia's wide-ranging flood damage. All this and more is Amateur Radio Newsline Report number 2317 comes your way right now. From around the world, this is Newsline. Amateur Radio's independence on the air news and broadcasting service. And now we're going from Valparaiso, Indiana. Here's Paul Brown, WD9GCO. Our top story this week takes us to the space station that China is building, module by module. The latest word is that one of those modules will have room for Amateur Radio. Jim Meachin, ZL2BHS, has those details. China's Tianlong Space Station, which is being constructed in low Earth orbit following the launch of its first module last May, is expected to have room for astronauts, experiments, and now amateur radio. The IARU Satellite Frequency Coordination Panel reports that it received an application on March 8th for an amateur radio payload to be on board. The 
attention is being promoted by the Chinese Radio Amateurs Club in cooperation with the Aerospace System Engineering Research Institute of Shanghai and the Harvard Institute of Technology. Previous news reports have noted that the Chinese main space agency plans to have three astronauts on board continuously for a minimum of 10 years. One module will house the astronauts. The space station expects to use the remaining two of its three modules to host scientific experiments of researchers from all nations of the UN. The amateur radio station is applying to use portions of the VHF UHF amateur radio band and will consist of communications by voice, repeater, AFSK digipeter, and SSTV or other digital imaging modes. Not unlike the radios on board the International Space Station, the ham radios on the Chinese Space Station are intended for a variety of uses, including contact with students to inspire careers in science, technology, engineering, and math. According to the application, the payload would launch in the third quarter of this year. For Amateur Radio Newsline, I'm Jim Meachin, the Dell 2 bhf Hands from Belarus and the Russian Federation are feeling the impact after their nation's memberships were suspended from the European Conference of Postal and Telecommunications Administrations. Ed Durant, DD5LP, has the update. The European Conference of Postal and Telecommunications Administrations has indefinitely suspended the membership of Belarus and the Russian Federation in a sweeping action that has an impact on amateur radio operators. An agreement within the conference known as the EPT grants amateur radio privileges to qualifying hums traveling between signatory countries without the need to obtain additional permits or licenses. The CEPT was formed to foster cooperation among its member nations with regards to postal and electronic communications. The suspension which comes in the wake of Russia's invasion of Ukraine took effect on the 18th of March. The Russian Federation joined CEPT in 1994. Belarus became a member in 2003. Radio Newsline, I'm Ed Durant, DE5LP. The Radio Society of Great Britain has suffered a great loss with the death of one of its key team members. Jeremy Booth, G4, and JH has that story. Charles Reeves, G1, MFG, has been the technical editor for Radcom magazine, the widely read publication sent three every month to society members throughout the world. The society announced that Giles, who had been diagnosed with an aggressive form of cancer just days earlier, became a silent key on Friday, the 18th of March. No further details were immediately available. We here at Amateur Radio Newsline extend our condolences to his family and friends. The society will be posting additional details about Giles on its website at rsgb.org forward slash fk. For Amateur Radio Newsline, I'm Jeremy Booth, G4 and JH. Amateur radio clubs are proud to be able to help in disasters. But what happens when the clubs themselves become victims? John Williams, VK4 and JJW, tells us about how one club in Australia has stepped up to help a dozen of those whose shacks were devastated by recent floods. An amateur radio club on the border of New South Wales and Victoria in Australia has come to the rescue of a dozen or so clubs but like their own, works to assist communities ravaged by such disasters as bushfires, earthquakes and floods. In this case, however, the North East Victoria Amateur Radio Club has stepped in because the other clubs became victims themselves. After recent floods destroyed their vital radio gear and in many cases washed it away. The club has been providing assistance by collecting funds as well as new radio gear. Fred Scott, vk 2 bfc Secretary of the Club, told ABC.net News that a fund has been created to replace as much of the other clubs lost gear as possible. He said many of the clubs belong to the Wireless Institute Australia's Civil Emergency Network. According to Frank, most of the equipment that was lost was not covered by flood damage insurance. Frank said that it was difficult to get that kind of insurance for such items as hand radio equipment and communication towers. Fam the Radio Newsline, I'm John Williams, VK4 JJW. Two groups of hands tested their portable communications capabilities recently on a remote island in India. 
Jason Daniels, VK2LAW, tells us about their drill. It takes a size and emergency preparedness brought hands in one region of India to a remote island on the river Ganja near Patna, the capital city of Bihar. It was a two-day field exercise on March 12th and 13th for members of the Society of Radio Amateurs relying only on battery power for more than 30 hours. They were joined by operators from the Indian Wave of Amateur Radio, the U2IWA, based in Kolkata, who, like the hands in Bihar, know that preparedness is essential in a region like theirs, which is prone to earthquakes and floods. Radio conditions that weekend were conducive to good contacts. According to a report on the global Bihari news site, hundreds of QSOs were made between that remote island and radio operators as far away as Europe. The hands were pleased with the results, since many of them provide essential communication during the region's natural disasters. For Amateur Radio Newsline, I'm Jason Daniels, BK2 LAW. Weather preparedness is a priority everywhere. Randy Sly, W4XJ, tells us how those of us in the United States can get involved. As we here in the United States approach the season for thunderstorms, tornadoes, and hurricanes, the National Weather Service is holding severe weather preparedness weeks across the country. Tornado drills, announcements through the media, and personal preparation information are just a few ways the Weather Service is getting the word out at this time of year to be prepared. It's a good time for amateur radio operators involved in Aries, Racy, CERT, Skywarn, and other groups to ensure that we are also prepared. This includes making sure that all radios, accessories, along with backup power sources, are fully functional, and that all contact information is up to date for the agencies and organizations served. Christopher Strong, Morning Coordination Meteorologist for the Baltimore, Washington, D.C. Weather Forecast Office, told Amateur Radio Newsline that hands can play a big part in being weather aware by knowing what threats are possible. Hands should have a plan if extreme weather occurs. Strong said that during an event, operators are important as they actively gather impact data from their community and get that information back to the National Weather Service which improves the accuracy of the notifications being issued. Over the years, the model, when all else fails, amateur radio, has proven true in many situations. This is not only due to amateur operators' readiness to serve, but our willingness to be prepared. For more information, go to weather.gov and click on Spring Preparedness. For Amateur Radio Newsline, I'm Randy Sly, W4XJ. It's time to think about the next generation of radio operators and appreciate their skill and dedication. Perhaps one of them will be the next recipient of the Amateur Radio Newsline Bill Pasternak Memorial Young Ham of the Euro Board. Consider nominating an amateur radio operator who's 18 years of age or younger with talent, promise, and a commitment to the spirit of ham radio. Find application forms on our website, arnewsline.org, under the YHOTY tab. Nominations close May 31st. Time for you to identify your station. We are the Amateur Radio Newsline, heard on bulletin stations around the world, including the Butler County Amateur Radio Public Service Group's K3 PSG Repeater in Butler, Pennsylvania, on Tuesdays at 8 p.m. local time. With K3 Oscar <laughs> Get ready for April 19th. If you're looking to upgrade, renew, or change your call sign, you have until that date to do so without having to pay a fee. The FCC has announced its new $35 application fee for U.S. amateur radio licenses takes effect on that date. The agency said the fees can be paid by using the Commission's Universal Licensing System on the FCC website. The FCC posted a public notice on its website on March 23rd announcing it would begin collecting the fees, which it has said will cover the costs of processing the applications. For him, the fees apply to new licenses, renewals, upgrades, sequential call sign changes, and applications for vanity calls. It does not apply to such administrative updates as a change of email or other mailing address. 
The team behind Oregon's first satellite gets bragging rights this week after its successful launch from Alaska. Ralph Spilacci, KK68 TV, brings us that story. Space enthusiasts are celebrating the launch of Oregon's first satellite, which carried amateur radio into low Earth orbit on a spacecraft no larger than a box of tissues. Known as Orasat Zero, it's an open source CubeSat built by the Portland State Aerospace Society, an interdisciplinary group of students at Portland State University. With solar panels, batteries, a color camera, and of course, amateur radio on board, it was launched on March 15th from Kodiak, Alaska. The group's faculty advisor, Andrew Greenberg, KD7CJT, said on the university website, quote, our small group of space hipsters gathered in the rocket room to watch the launch with fancy bagels and pour over coffee, and then collectively held our breath for more than an hour. End quote. After some nervous moments, they learned the flight had gone smoothly. Its mission, which is to test the CubeSat system itself, is expected to last several years. Fear not, for this will be the first and the last for Oregon. The group is already hard at work on Orosat 0.5, and it's scheduled for launch this summer. It will be a larger satellite for NASA's CubeSat launch initiative, and will carry equipment gathering data for global climate science, studying the distribution of high-altitude cirrus clouds. Meanwhile, if you'd like to track the pride of Oregon space fans, see the link in the text version of this week's script at ARnewsline.org. For Amateur Radio Newsline, I'm Rob Squillage, KK6ITV. Norway is moving forward with a plan to introduce a new amateur radio license for beginners. Jeremy Booth, G4NJH, has that story. Norway has plans to introduce a 10 watt engine at the Pacific Ocean hands. It has the financial support of 1 million kroner, or nearly 114,000 US dollars, from the Norwegian Research Council with the input of hands throughout the nation. The proposal introduced last year was discussed at Norway's HAM meeting, an annual amateur radio convention. Attendees included the communications regulator, NCOM, and the Norwegian Radio Relay League, the NRRL, 